certainly pleased to be here this afternoon. And um, I thought I would start off with just giving you a bit of background. Uh, I'm the CEO with uh, BC Care Providers Association. Uh, we're a provincial association. We were established uh, in early 1977, so we've been around for 30 plus years. Our membership really includes um, residential care, home support, assisted living providers throughout the province. We have uh, slightly over 120 members. Uh, they, in turn, employ more than 13,000 employees. Our membership, as well as a mix of private, nonprofit, and the denominational, the majority of those um, are publicly funded uh, through the health authority or the ministry, although a number of them also provide services on a strictly private pay basis. And overall, our membership has over 10,000 clients, uh, residential clients, and 6,000 home support clients that they're providing care every day. Um, in terms of our role and function, uh, we certainly we play an advocacy role on behalf of our members and seniors and the public around legislation, policy, and funding, uh, promote quality standards, uh, try to serve as a voice for our sector, uh, facilitate communication and networking opportunities such as this, as well as respond to current and emerging issues. And in some of the, the earlier sessions this morning, I think we were talking about uh, the need for advocacy. And I think at this point in time, with the Ombudsperson Report and the Ministry Action Plan, uh, there is a real opportunity to bring a number of this, these issues to the forefront, especially uh, the Ombudsperson has put together a number of recommendations in, in home support uh, and some of the changes, uh, as well as in residential care that, that hopefully will improve the system throughout. Um, just some general statistics, I guess, around the, the home support. Um, and I guess another question came up earlier, home care versus home support. I'm used to using the term home support because that's who our members are, uh, rather than generic home care, which includes RN, physio, OT, social work, and home support. So when I'm using home support, I'm really uh, referencing the home support workers providing activities of daily living and things like that. Um, there's over 30,000 seniors currently receiving home support. Um, I noticed, you know, that there are different numbers certainly floating around. I know Winona, I think, had 33. When I looked at the, the Ombudsperson report, she had a different number. Um, but I think certainly it, it's, it exceeds the, the, the number of, of residents in long-term care, uh, which is about 26,000. The amount of dollars that, that the ministry or government currently spending on home support is three, $334 million. Um, for funded residential care, it's, it's about $1.3 billion. So, you know, the home support side is still uh, approximately one quarter of, of what's being spent on, on residential care. The average cost is about $30 to, to $40 per hour of service. Um, an interesting aspect, uh, for those clients receiving service, 71% receive the home support services at no cost. Uh, the remaining balance are paying um, approximately five to $10 per day per visit. So the actual uh, financial implications of receiving home support uh, doesn't really have a strong uh, negative financial impact. When we look at the, uh, the, the workers within the sector, um, there's over 9,000 home support employees. And the interesting part in, in, in home support is the large percentage of, of casual employees, which is over 50%. And similarly, the, the age of workers um, is slightly uh, above 45 with a high proportion of uh, female employees. Now, in, in 2010, uh, our, our association established what we called our BC Cares Project. Um, and if you're interested and want to look at any of the documents uh, that 
came up under that project. Uh, we do have a website, www.bccares.ca, where a number of the reports that Winona was, was referencing and some other reports uh, just dealing with the whole issue of retention recruitment um, in, in, the, in the continuing care sector. So our project uh, actually formally started in, in 2010 uh, to look at the, the supply, demand, uh, retention, recruitment issues uh, with care aides, home support workers, and, and LPNs. We did receive approximately slightly over $300,000 uh, through the Federal Provincial Labor Market Adjustment Funding. Um, and that particular project was actually a, a follow-up to a, a project that we had in 2009 um, looking at a at care aid uh, awareness program. In 2009, uh, the sector, especially in residential care, uh, experienced a real shortage of, of uh, care aids. Uh, government had announced 5,000 new beds or a number of new facilities opening, uh, but there was a real shortage at that point uh, and an inability to uh, actually fill the spaces. And our 2010 project was similarly, well, let's take another look, uh, have things changed or not? Um, and what we did find was on, on the uh, residential and the LPN, the, the questions around uh, recruitment, retention, were largely meeting uh, the actual needs. Uh, on the home support side, uh, there were still much more uh, issues that I, I think Wona had talked about. The, the actual project was really a, a unique collaboration um, in terms of having employers, labor, government, uh, educational partners. Um, functioning under uh, the BC Seniors Care HR Steering Committee. So uh, by having that involvement, I think we were able to uh, achieve some, some general consensus and uh, develop an HR strategy and implementation for, for the sector. Um, coming out of that, we did retain the, the How Group uh, that put together our, the first report uh, dealing uh, broadly with an HR strategy and a number of recommendations for LPNs, residential care, as well as home support, and then the most recent uh, report which really dealt with uh, retention recruitment of home support workers. Um, the, the labor market information report was the report, again, again I'm, I, I will be repeating some of the things that Winona uh, had talked to you about, um, but hopefully I can try to capsulize it very shortly or, or quickly. Um, we retained HEABC to actually do a, a formal analysis and documentation of retention recruitment demographics. Um, historically, uh, HEABC had done that type of a report for the health authorities, uh, but there was no hard data on uh, the affiliate sector or the contracted sector. Uh, so this was the first opportunity to really get some hard, accurate data in terms of what was happening within the sector. And I'm really just summarizing uh, the, the home support. 88% um, of, of the employers uh, had no problem recruiting full-time or part-time employees. 30% um, had a major problem in, in recruiting casuals. 60% um, were indicating that it was more difficult now to recruit than, than what it was two years prior. And 50% had a major problem in retention of casuals. So, you know, the, the whole question of, of retention recruitment is still a big issue for home support, uh, both from a cost point of view and uh, the projected costs uh, are estimated at $4,100 per employee for, for, uh, for turnover, um, so it's fairly significant. And I, I, the next slide, uh, I think Winona similarly had touched on this in terms of um, what were the reasons for retention problems? And, and the three primary one was in, individuals and employers were indicating insufficient working hours, 
uh, undesirable shift schedule and a lack of competitive wages in terms of there was no guarantee of, of hours. So turnover definitely is impacting uh, the overall cost and the quality of care that, that uh, agencies are, are able to provide. Um, scheduling in, in the discussion certainly came out and I think what Winona indicated uh, the importance uh, that that can have on helping retain uh, home support workers. Uh, similarly, there was a brief discussion around uh, promoting meaningful relationships with clients and peers, and some of that certainly exists within cluster care environments where there's greater continuity. In, in the longer run, um, an unstable workforce, especially with an aging workfo uh, workforce, um, and if there's an economic turnaround, uh, recruitment and retention is going to be that much more important. The systemic cha uh, challenges, um, I don't think I'll go through all of those in detail. Similarly, um, these really come out of uh, the, the Howe report in terms of uh, the increasing demand and, and the aging of the population and the impact that that's going to have on supply. Um, the home sport usually is not a career choice uh, or not the, the career choice and many employees are. If they have the opportunity, they are definitely moving to facilities uh, or to health employers um, rather than remaining in home support. Um, the funding model, the client expectations, the issue around peak scheduling, morning versus evening, all of those have, have just basic impacts on uh, the overall system. And HR planning is, is certainly becoming that much more critical uh, as turnover is, is increasing. And uh, certainly our expectation is that uh, there will be a significant expansion of home support over the next little while, so the demand for workers are, are going to be even that much more important. Um, the recommended solutions, um, continued collaboration among the partners, um, which include the providers, the unions, uh, government, health, uh, health authority, uh, and the educators. Uh, certainly what came up uh, through the scheduling review and, and the importance of everyone having a clear understanding of, of what the various pressures are. Um, and I think by um, having that collaboration among all of those groups, we have a very strong voice to go back to government and hopefully get agreement around some of the changes that, that we require. Um, Winona talked about the, the scheduler training um, and curriculum development. That is being that is proceeding, um, and it, it's it's jointly funded by um, the unions and the uh, funding that we've uh, that we've received. So it's an indication of the level of support that we we've, we've actually got partners helping to to pay for some of the costs. Um, the home support summit, similar to these sorts of workshops, we're hoping uh, for next October to. Uh, tie in to both the, um, the, the health care worker uh, recognition day and the Canadian Home Care uh, Association is having a national conference out here I think the same week. So we're going to try and piggyback on, on those two and get all of the major players uh, hopefully to participate in the, sum in the summit and come up with some formal recommendations. Um, Another one of the solutions I think is the ombudsperson has, has raised some, some uh, very specific recommendations around reviewing the adequacy of, of the home support services, uh, whether or not they can be expanded, uh, ensuring that the, the curriculum applies across um, uh, all training schools, both private and nonprofit. Uh, but I think reacting and responding and getting the, the ombudsperson's recommendations and ensuring government follows through is, is, is one of the uh, important outcomes. Um, another initiative that we're looking at is, is uh, educating the employees and students so that they have a, a clear expectation 
of what the job actually entails. Very often they're coming into it with, with unrealistic expectations, not recognizing, you know, you, most likely you may end up with casual work, um, split shifts, things like that to start with and what your future opportunities are. And the other aspect we're hoping is, is encouraging uh, greater practicums for new students with home support agencies rather than within residential care. And finally, uh, we want to continue with the, the uh, like regular either annual or, or semi-annual um, surveys of recruitment uh, retention issues because we found that within two years you can see a significant changes uh, and it has an impact on, on, on the sector. So, uh, thank you.